Hello everyone, I'm Gigian and this is the Wales FM Fireside Chat with Artists. In this show, we talk about everything and anything art and crypto in the NFT scene with designers and creators alike, otherwise known as non-fungible tokens. My guest today is Wes Henry, an avid meditator and flow state enthusiast. The goal of Wes art is to inspire a sense of stillness. His portraits, uh, and zenscapes and bonsai trees uh, with a variety of style try to contribute to an altered mental state. Hey Wes, how are you doing, man? Good, how are you? It's a pleasure to have you here, man. I'm, 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 I'm hyped. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Thank you. So what I would like to know uh, from the get-go uh, is how long have you been creating art and how did you start? Uh, so that's interesting. So essentially it starts all the way back in the beginning. Uh, I, as a kid, my parents were very supportive of me being an artist. So I was always in art classes uh, outside of school and then in school as well. Uh, and and interestingly enough when i was in high school i was uh in what's called advanced placement art in that high school in a stevenson suburb of chicago and i met this guy there was some day where a, a bunch of different artists from different fields come to the school and the 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 ap class was one class of like 15 hand-picked kids out of the whole school there's like five thousand kids there um mm -hmm. and this one guy, Gary Fawzen, showed up and he taught a little class. And I, and I afterwards said, oh, my God, I, I learned more from you than I have in so many of these other art classes. Um, this is amazing. And he, what he was doing was teaching a caricature class. Um, so afterwards, my art teacher said, hey, this is one of my star pupils giving me a lot of you know love and respect. And the guy was like, hey, that's awesome. Let me see some of your work. Come back tomorrow and show me some of your stuff because I might have a potential job for you. And I came back the next day with a bunch of portraiture and stuff and, and he offered me a job. And it was actually my, uh, one of my first jobs was a caricature artist. He was in charge of all the booths at Six Flags Great America. It's in Gurney. It's a, you know, giant theme park. Six Flags has a lot of different ones. And this one was called Great America. So he ran all the booths and I became a caricature artist at that place. So it sounds a little crazy, but um, it was amazing for me because I was the youngest artist he'd ever hired by about five years. Everyone else was in college. Um, so it was an incredible experience, me getting to be around full-time professional artists for the for the first time in my life. Uh, and, and what he did is he took three months up till kind of like the opening in summer to teach me how to draw a caricature of a person. So that included uh, using pencil. Uh, they're like these very thick 6B pencils with kind of like a grip around them, uh, as well as the airbrush. And he, another thing he taught was to never use an eraser. So it really kind of upped my skills and upped the pressure. And then I was a caricature artist there for a full summer um, and unfortunately, just due to my age, I was like, well, I'm going to go chase women and, and crazy things after this. It was a it was a lot of work. But I think that solidified uh, a lot of my work and how I think about things, because what he did was he taught me to look at kind of every face in the world and create this kind of prototypical norm, this normal prototype. And then base every other face off of that and any differences are accentuated and that's essentially what a character is and so i learned that i learned how to sell every artist had like a cash register so you were your own little marketplace uh so i learned a lot compacted into that like one summer um so i would say that was the biggest event um and then i went off to college and i was going to be a fine artist at indiana university but I took my first philosophy class and that did it for me. So I, I uh, took like philosophy 101 and I ran from that class to admissions. And I said, that's it. I'm going to be a philosophy teacher. This is my life. This is what I want to do. Um, so I completely switched roads and, and, and thought even if I don't 
you know, major in fine art, which is essentially what I came in there to do because they have a very good fine arts um, program for a liberal arts college. Um, I wanted to bring kind of conceptually my my brain, my mind around the art up many levels. Uh, and I did that. And then when I got out of college, uh, at the end, I realized, wow, I think being a philosophy professor is not the lifestyle that I want is very constrained. You're, you have to take, you know, whatever job it might be in Omaha, Nebraska, not that that's a bad mm -hmm. place, but you're just, then you have to go there. That's where your life is. And then you're going to spend 30, 40 years. And I thought, you know what? I can do better uh, going back into art. So I rushed really quickly to learn the Adobe suite. I bought the giant, uh, at the time it was just CS1, I think, the Adobe suite. Bought the whole book in my parents' basement, went through the whole thing, taught myself every piece of software. I think at that time there were like five or six big ones and, and like uh, Flash was a thing and, and uh, uh, Dreamweaver, I think was a thing for web design uh, and, and learned that. And I went out in Chicago and built a simple portfolio and, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna be much more free and more lucrative to just go into commercial art and uh, that's what I did. I got my first job in there and then worked my way up through uh, the Chicago advertising scene and became creative director, which is kind of the top of the mountain. Uh, and did that for many years, something like 15 years or something. And then uh, right before the pandemic, I was getting pretty technical because I was always savvy with the web stuff. And I realized this is not what I want to do. Like when, when you're a creative director, I had a very, some cool brands that, you know, shipped me around the world when I sold in multi-million dollar ideas, but you're, you're really more of a manager. And I had the uh, yearning to create again. So I thought, you know, all right, if there's any time, I don't have any kids, I got a girlfriend, but like, this is the time to try and make it work. Um, so I, quit my job right before the pandemic and thought I'm going to start really diving into art again uh, and then run my own shop for freelance to support myself. Uh, and, and basically that's what I did. I started an Instagram account, uh, started drawing, you can see like kind of the journey in my Instagram account from mm -hmm. the first one, it was like some giraffe that I did in pencil. And this is all in, by the way, uh, my, my first stuff is, is on Procreate. So I, I also found, oh, it's 10 bucks for Procreate. And I still, to this day, learn new shit about that thing uh, uh, every day. And it's it's an amazing piece of software and it's $10. And I'm used to paying so much money for all the Adobe stuff, which is also wonderful. I'm amazing at Photoshop, but uh, really went down the, let's not do commercial art, let's do art for me, see how people react so since then, my Instagram following has grown considerably uh, up to like 26,000 or something. And the feedback has been incredible. And I opened a shop where I sell prints, brought in a buddy who I work with to help me run the logistics of shipping and all that. And then one day he's like, oh my God, hey, uh, the NFT world exists. We should get, you know, try our hand at this. And and for me, I, I was like, what the heck? what are you even talking about? This was like last <laughs> la last December, maybe, because I figured in my mm -hmm. head, oh, I'm going to have to do canvas work. I'm going to have to get out the oil paint in my, you know, mm -hmm. one bedroom, one bedroom condo in Chicago and start painting. And so there's going to be fumes because it's like a small place. That's and it's gonna not be good. Yeah. But but then NFT came right then at that moment when I, I was like, I want to be a legit artist. So I was about to go to Canvas and I learned, no, I can stay in the digital ecosystem and, and, and not have to like quote unquote legitimize myself as a Canvas artist to get into galleries, yada, yada, yada. I can stay here and sell actual digital originals. And that's when I learned and it just blew my mind. Um, how it all works and, and financially that's you know at the end of the day that's my goal is to support myself and truly do nothing but art that's my goal um, for this year and uh, it's already been an incredible journey I've had I had my first drop on known origin uh, my, my second it's not really a drop but kind of a featured spot um, in makers place that Ronan helped me out with um, and and mm -hmm. 
it's amazing, man. So that's kind of how I got here. It, it, long story long, I guess. <laughs> No, man, what a journey. That's that's so different to have uh, gotten a job doing art at 16 with someone who was uh, like willing to teach. That is super cool, man. That's Thank a nice you. start. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, so usually I like to ask people how um, the work and style has evolved over time. Uh, and we can clearly see that it did. Uh, yeah. I also like to ask, like, how does it work? Like, it's your this favorite palette of yours, but you seem to be incredibly flexible when it comes to that. Uh, so can you give us a little rundown of the evolution and your taste? Sure. So that is a question I get a lot because my style uh, is all over the board. So part of that is also, I found a new brush pack and it happens to be, you know, charcoal <laughs> or watercolor or oil paint. There's a um, singer sergeant um, like oil pack that is like six brushes, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. But that has become a really big deal to me and it was $6. I mean, the, the, the cost of these tools to, to create is so low, it's incredible and I really just, start going i think it was like the smoke and monkey or something like that uh was the first piece where i really tried out you know all right let me try my hand at oil painting in here uh and also i have a a huge um kind of love for japanese culture um very influenced by that uh hence my signature is essentially mm -hmm. like a stamp that you'll see in a lot of like sumi e art um and so basically the breadth of that, you can see it started out with sketching kind of, you know, 2D pencil. It's, it's all 2D, um, by the way, which is pretty different in the NFT world from what I've seen. There's a lot of 3D art out there. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, I'm a, you know, I'd consider myself a fine artist in the NFT world, which I think from what I've seen is somewhat rare. I'm just starting to get into animation i'm actually uh, about to collab with a guy who's done some stuff for boss logic which is gonna be pretty incredible um like these zenscapes that i have currently on maker's place um like for instance those are watercolors so the way you do water watercolor digitally that's probably the the furthest thing from the reality right like painting drawing with a pencil is you know pretty one-to-one -one. Um, it makes mm -hmm. sense for drawing on an iPad. Um, it's not like a big leap. Uh, oil painting is, is if you have the right brush pack, pack again, I think you can make a one-to-one -one and it's pretty damn close. It's incredible how quickly you can adapt to that, which oil painting was always kind of a jam as far as uh, my favorite medium. And then charcoal, and then you can kind of mix mediums uh, and, and kind of go back and forth like inking i love a lot i love black ink on white and just keeping minimal uh kind of that stark figure ground contrast um and and so the zenscapes for instance um are a watercolor which you literally can push around water digitally um when you do these when when you use these brushes you can move it like water moves they've done an incredible job of and i don't i do not work for them even though it sounds like i do i just love it so much because it's like people need to know about this so you can move around water you can use like salt for texture you can you you throw at the top of it you can get these high res kind of canvases for mm -hmm. maybe it's watercolor paper or oil paper so i depending on the medium i throw a different canvas on top of it to make it really seem realistic and a lot of times i do that you know uh in the process so i'll throw that layer uh, on a multiply all the way at the top while i'm creating so i could see especially for oil paint um, because the detail goes down a little bit but kind of the 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 tooth of it um that affects the the overall product is is affected pretty greatly um so it, it it's just incredible so i guess uh long long again to be long-winded i guess uh 
I, I kind of love trying everything. I'm very experimental. Again, I've only been doing this for a year. This is going to be a long road for me. I'm playing the long game, right? I have drops. I'm doing all of these things, but I guarantee you, I mean, even if you look at my original stuff, I'll just line drawing that's whimsical to now where I'm getting into, you know, more highly detailed oil painting. And now I'm starting to get into animation that this is going mm -hmm. to be something that is going to look good on your wall. That's my end goal is you're going to have a beautiful digital screen on your wall that looks it's framed up and it has a mat and you're going to put my stuff in there and it's not some wild super colored loop with music and all that that's not kind of where my head is i'm um really trying to be a little bit more i, I love a lot of that stuff but more kind of elegant in the fine art sense so subtle animation or no animation um uh, really drawing back to kind of traditional roots in fine art with being purely digital so i i i, I guess that kind of answers that what, what my favorite is i'm not even sure i mean it changes <laughs> day to day there'll, there'll be many days where i'm like oh my god I, I i really always shoot for kind of this flow state when creating and that's something that i talk about and it it sounds a little bit cheesy but honest to god i get into the state where i can be kind of a passenger while i'm creating and there's no thoughts i mean uh, as i've as you've said and as i've said i'm an avid meditator so i'm mm -hmm. very my awareness is very um aware of what's going on and can and can pick up and perceive when this is happening and of course of course it's the whole thing when you think you're in the flow state and realize that that's when you jump out of it but i can get that way oh, yes. quickly i can get that way very quickly with oil painting for instance specifically because there's less like guessing in in watercolor there's a lot of like well let's see what this does so there's ex a lot of experimenting which is a different experience um which is also still amazing like these zenscapes uh that you're showing for instance um i, I work at night now because i've realized to get into a clear headspace i need to be dark outside i need to look out i'm i'm on the 23rd floor in a condo building in chicago Ooh. i look out i have a beautiful view and i look out over the city and it is just the light for light's sake it's not individual people everyone's mm -hmm. sleeping i start my work about midnight and i go till like the sun is coming up essentially so it's i like that quiet time i like to get to a peaceful spot and for a lot of these works I just let it come through me and it sounds almost like a daft punk where that guy talks about like my name is Massimo and he talks about the drums or whatever like it's a, you know the drums are coming through me like I honestly feel <laughs> that that happens to me often like I it comes through something from the void comes through me and in the end at in the finished product i'm looking at it in awe not because oh my god i'm amazing because i'm like holy shit like look at what well, look at what was just created in that space mm -hmm. and a time warp i mean it might be four hours five hours six hours and i it felt like 30 minutes and i have this new product that i'm so proud of that i would like to share with people on instagram and whatnot uh and then i tried to get some sleep uh, and then post it the next day and that's kind of my process so, so it's a little all over the board oh man no it's lovely because for it translates the thing is uh, everything that you said uh translates i can i can understand the process and there is something else as well that you did there talking about the brushes the techniques i feel like the community is eager to learn so i really appreciate the details that you provide uh for those who are keen to that uh, it's very very valuable uh, but also to see that you're experimenting that you're learning and that it's a process that you take pleasure uh and that you can be amazed by by your own pieces that that is that is priceless i love that thank you thank you i mean it it, it truly is that way and it, it 
just for anyone that is looking at my stuff or enjoys it. Like I, I want to stress this, that my goal is to be in this for the long haul. And when I say long haul, I mean the rest of my life. I would like, and NFT has allowed me this freedom, this luxury to financially support myself um, by doing things like this and, and my print shop, I sell prints as well for, there's a large community, especially Instagram so far that I've learned um, that is, doesn't know what the hell NFTs are. And it's very, it can be lucrative, but that's really for me, I just need enough money to support myself as an artist. And that's it for me. That's it. I will live in a tower and do nothing, but I mean, I'm moving to Denver, so I will do things like hiking. I want to be an outdoorsman to get, you know, recharge my batteries. But my free time, I want every night, every night to be consumed by the creative process. I want to be able to turn off everything and not have any other obligations and just do art. And I am 100% positive that in the long run, my work will be transformed into something. I have, n I personally have no idea where it's gonna go from here. And that just like each individual piece, a lot of times, sometimes I have a blueprint and I have an idea of what I'm gonna do and I get it down in pencil. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm gonna render this. And I know kind of where I'm headed. I know where the finish line is. I don't know exactly how far it's, it, the finish line ac actually is, but I know, all right, I need to go down this trail and it's gonna be about two hours, three hours, four hours, five, whatever, and I'll get there and it'll be great. I don't know exactly what it'll look like, but this journey that I'm taking is, is just like individually doing one of these pieces. I have no idea where it's gonna go. I'm just letting go of the, the driver's wheel, if you will, kind of like a fight club, like let go situation. And it sounds so fucking cheesy, but truly <laughs> um, it's amazing, man. It's crazy because I don't know what I'm capable of. And I think it's a lot because I can, honest to God, I can, like I went to the Art Institute and I saw Monet I, you know, the Art Institute mm -hmm. of Chicago, I go there all the fucking time. Can I swear on this thing, by the way? Oh, yeah, no problem. I, I okay, am the okay. one who swears the most. <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry, it's just, I want to be authentic and like, that's the way. I oh, talk. yeah, so of course. Fuck okay. it. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck it. Nice, nice. So I'll go to the Art Institute and we have a wonderful Monet collection and we just had um, you know, a more of a specialized collection where they brought in all kinds of shit from around the world. And it inspires me so much, like in impressionism specifically. And I go mm -hmm. and look at that and I come home and then I did a Monet portrait. Like, oh my God, I didn't even know what this dude looked like. I didn't even know Monet was a caricature artist when he was a kid. And it just blows my <laughs> mind. I'm like, oh my God, like this. Like I, I thought that was like a part uh -huh. that I was like should be like slightly uh -huh. embarrassed about, but it's like no, some of these uh -huh. like uh, some of these painters that are you know my heroes that create these amazing works, uh, whether you like them or not, whatever. Like I, I, they inspire so much. Like oh, they can take that scene and turn it into this on a two D surface, um, and it, I don't know, it just really. So I get inspired all over the place. Uh, the Art Institute is definitely a place that I get inspired by, but even like Instagram, like my feed, I don't follow people I know. Oh, look at my weekend. I went and I did this, take me back to the ocean. I don't give a shit. I don't follow those people. I follow artists, I follow photographers. Um, and that's, so I surround myself in art. So my inspiration is constant. So I have a list of, it literally in my notepad on my phone, things I should make art. And it is like 500 deep and grows by like five every day of just things I should make. And I, it, the list will never go away. So part of me also gets caught up with, holy shit, like I don't have enough time to do all of this. That's why I'm like, I want to create a piece every day. I want to stop doing branding and web work which I do a lot and that's how I pay my bills, right? Like I want to stop doing that and just be 
in that flow state creative space just jump in there and stay for hours and jump back and stay for hours all day i mean that that is the goal and i i i am so excited about the future and especially this nft thing holy shit i can stay in the digital world and do whatever i want and people are so supportive it's just it's amazing and i and i, I you know again ronan like i said shout out to ronan uh and shout out to jeremy olken who who's been a a business partner and Danny Rosenberg as well. Uh who are, these are three people that have really helped me with technical shit uh as well as you know figuring out business side to to keep the lights on to keep the water on so I can stay in that space and I I'm so thankful of all of this even being on this interview man it's just the ride is amazing and the the feedback and the positivity in the NFT world right now is so positive you know it's just i'm so i don't want to say blessed cuz i fucking hate when people say that but i honestly <laughs> feel, i honestly feel that way man it's it's amazing mhm mm no man first of all i'd like to say that i'm very jealous because i love monet and i would love to have access to some <laughs> 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 but that's but that's beautiful but that's beautiful i also i i like the fact that for a bunch of people especially people coming in uh it's often about the money right it's about uh, often about getting rich and stuff but for you very clearly is about the mean right it's about yes. the this mean of exchange and the fact that you can you can do what you have been wanting to do but did not had the mean before even yes. though you are a person who has been working with art for a reasonable amount of time uh it was never just about being creative right yes. uh yes and and often it was about being constrained uh so yes. i i see that journey and i just i cannot help but hope really hard that it works out for you because this 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 willingness to learn and and being for the long run uh it it's beautiful it fits it fits with this ethos that is so currently so special about the nft community i love that man thank thank you yeah it's uh it, it honestly is that way now because and it's strange how the pandemic hit right like i quit my job mm -hmm. and i i i've got to say like i was not happy i mean if i look at it and speak just authentically here for a second which is to be a little bit vulnerable like i you know i mean advertising man it is fucking stressful hey you have you know here's the brief we just talked to a client of this big mm -hmm. brand like the bigger the brand the more fucked up everyone is on the team the more stressful it is and <laughs> all, and, and as a kid you're like oh i'm going to change the fucking coca cola logo and change the world no you are not you are going to work on tom's kleenex and you'll be thankful to affect his packaging in CVS and boy look at your work like I, and and I never loved it like when I first started out I did love it because I was a designer I was an art director I was coming through the ranks but when you get up to the top creative direction you are a therapist and a manager for the wild creative personalities that you have to uh kind of be the the maestro to to make oh no i know that the account people are mean but you need to do this and it's okay we're going to be all right like you are managing creative personalities and guiding the ship in a direction and the amount that you actually create at high levels is low and i started to really be like ah oh, fuck man i don't like this and it was like I'm I'm having a drink to to take the day off when I get home and I and it became like a problem where I'm like mm -hmm. holy shit I'm living an unhealthy lifestyle and since I quit that shit since I quit and thought I'm going to be a freelancer and it's stressful being a full-time freelancer is not for the weak uh, of heart because you don't know where your paycheck is coming from and next month you may mm -hmm. not have any jobs so you got to figure it out as you go so for anyone out there i mean if you have responsibilities like you know a family it's super difficult i have the luxury that i do not so i can 
live frugally and be free, but I learned there's a whole other world. You don't know it when you're working a nine to five in a something like advertising, even in the creative world, right? Like it's like, oh, you have such a cool job, like Mad Men, I watched that show, it's great. No, it's fucked, man. Imagine being the main dude like John Hamm in Mad Men. Like I couldn't watch that show because it would stress me out because they'd be like, all right, John Hamm, <laughs> there's this new like cigarette company and their sales are fucked and you gotta figure it out. You got 48 hours, man, good luck. So he just like, you know, go to the bar and like, you know, hit up a bunch of women and just like smoke a cigarette in his lounge and just write something down in a notepad and come back and tell people and like take it all the way to the finish line. That is not that far away from the actual truth of what you do. It's bananas, except, you know, that whole world is 30 years gone or whatever. There's still like people that I guess are lingering, but they're dying out because of the digital platform. But it it's it's crazy that world and it's not very creative honestly like you will you when you rise to the top if you're good in the game of making money in the game of playing the corporate game you will not be that creative at the top you will be dealing with type you know basically like a shareholder board giant people in a brand you will be so far removed from the people that actually make the decision they'll be judging your work based on an email based off of a meeting with their own teams you will not get to present you know and if you do it's it's such a pressure cooker and now it is completely different for me now i get to create what i like exactly what i like and i've learned because when i first started out i was like well i want to make some art what do people respond to what do they like more and i started to kind of submit to that as it like it's literally my as an advertiser you know as a creative director like well what do the people let's do a a test let's design by committee like that is the recipe for bullshit, man right design by committee is how why our commercials are fucking terrible like you mm -hmm. need to design you need to design by one person's crazy fucking idea that's how you get crazy campaigns and you can't do that like that world is gone there are too many cops in that wheel and it will get watered down and will be bullshit and now i can create exactly what the fuck i want if today i would like to do a portrait of monet for instance and i mm -hmm. want to uh, you go into the background and get a little monet-esque right with inappropriate with some brushes i'm gonna do that and i have to take nobody's opinion onto what i should change about it the only thing i deal with is in that flow state i listen to that little inner voice it's like you know kind of the in this realm it's a realm of silence okay so there's like instinct guides it so that tiny little voice is like hey maybe we should take a right maybe we should take a left mm -hmm. i listen i listen to that voice alone to get to where i'm headed and that gut instinct is why i'm able to produce amazing things that's why i'm shocked by the work that I have when I'm done creating. Cause I look at it and go, holy shit. And I listen to that little voice along the whole road. And that it, I, instinct is the only word I can think of that is, is that voice. But I honest to God, don't know what it is. I am not a religious man. I am a proud fucking atheist, right? Like I am a meditator in the scientific sense. I am not there. I do not believe that there's some Holy Spirit coming through me. I am a scientist mm -hmm. and philosopher. I believe that you yourself are the universe and our God, yada, yada, sounds cheesy, but you can do it. You have the, the capability and you, everyone can tap into that. And that right there is what I'm trying to do when I make these works. And it is just fucking starting now. Oh man, no, oh, there's so much to relate there. <laughs> there's so much to relate there and i'm i'm sure this community uh, we often discuss uh meditation and stuff like that as well and i think 
of course, uh, in, with all due respect to everyone's religion uh, and practices, I'm uh, of course. I, I am of course. Um, as well an atheist, but have uh, have been insanely interested by by Zen Buddhism and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I I completely understand what you mean there, and and I love seeing that coming to play as a creative process, right? Um, yeah. And what what it what it does. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and then and that is another thing to to be you know not to go down that road too far, but um, specifically uh, you know Buddhism is you know the whole saying like oh it's less of a religion more of a philosophy. I honestly believe that that is true. It's it's a closer thing to wow that's a lovely story, but the practice of it is that it's all about you. Like you're not. You know, oh my God, you were born, you're fucked, you're a sinner, way to go, asshole. Now you gotta make up for it your whole life. Like, it's not that. <laughs> it is, like, it, it's very different. It's no, no, no. You, mm -hmm, suffering, mm -hmm. suffering is real. It's constant. The, the cycle of desire is constant. We can move above that. You can see that. You can witness that. Who you are even can be, you know, disintegrated where you have this love and ability to see we're all in it together like there are so many beautiful things and philosophies from that quote-unquote religion that that i love but even zen specifically like i i do a lot of meditation retreats um that are you know two week 10 day uh for vipassana is one of the the meditation um practices that it's 10 days silent right like you are dead silent for 10 days i did another one that was called the sashin which i did with a bunch of zen monks in the mountains and you are i think that was also 10 days um and it was crazy i'm wearing like north face gear and these people are in robes uh sitting uh sitting and doing zen meditation uh zazen which is eyes open meditation which is very fucking difficult and i definitely do not recommend that to anyone to ever do that until you are advanced but doing things like that you you get to know yourself right know thyself that whole philosophical um giant pillar um that is how you do it right and like i i truly believe the best life you can live like i'm a huge guy with, with sam harris for instance like his waking up app i i listen to that and he's he's one of my kind of influencers that i, I take what he says to heart um because he's like a, a very interested in like he's like a essentially neurology and brain sciences which i believe can lead to forefront mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. meditation is a good thing um and and your relationship with your thoughts is the most important yes. relationship that you have in your life. Yeah, yeah, I love my kids, I love my wife, I love my family, whatever. No, no, wait. The first and most important relationship is with your mind first. And after that comes everything else. Like the, the fact that, that that is not understood, like not that I know something different, but the fact that that's not talked about enough or understood that, hey, you're, like you cast a to be oh no you cut off can you hear us then, then. yeah you cut off can you repeat the last phrase i'm sorry oh sorry there was a there was a call coming through that must have been that so the, the to be kantian in a sense you cast a net over your environment and then you pull that net back in and your predispositions determine what you're going to interpret with your senses, right? With your mind, with your, oh, it should have been better. I w it could have been this, it could have been that. It would have been better. I wish it was sunny, but it's cloudy. Like all of these things, that's your every second experience in life. And you can change that. You can change that. And that is another thing that through my work, like I try and not only tap into that and be in this state of stillness, if you will, I use that word because I think it represents mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do pretty well, G get in there and create while in that space. And I honestly believe that that is the greatest space that there is in life. You can love your loved ones more when you are fully aware of where your focus is and focus 
is a key word there. Like your focus, if you're living your life every day and you're surrounded by family and you're, you know, all of this shit, but your focus is elsewhere. You're thinking about, you're worrying, whatever you're ruminating, you can't live in that present moment. And that's one of the things in my work I want to do is I want to bring peaceful places and give it to people. Whether And right now in the NFT world, there's not really a great, you know, digital display to show it in your home. Kind of this, you know, this metaverse or whatever they're calling it, where you can, you know, put it up and show your friends and keep it in your wallet and all this stuff. But in a year or two, you'll be able to mm -hmm. put that on your wall. And, and on your wall is where I'd like to be so that when you wake up, you wake up you know, in a great mood and you look at this and say, ah, oh, that's right. You know what? Today's going to be fucking great. You know, like everyone has problems like life suffering, but that's beautiful. It's like a reminder that it's all good. And mm -hmm. it's all good. If you want to subscribe to it's all good. And I, and, and that is a big theme with all of my art is that I'm, I'm also, I do a lot of things that I try to, share that with people not that i am some expert because i don't know shit i know that for sure right? as a <laughs> philosophy professor there or as a philosophy wannabe professor i know that i don't know shit that's what i've learned my education so with that you know choose to have a lovely day it's sunny go outside walk around like live in a fucking moment and those these pieces that i'm doing when i get into these monks and these zenscapes and these very zen you know i do a lot of like ensos which is essentially you know the idea behind that it's very zen right you're in a certain mind state in a certain moment in life and you take the brush this this one happening to be digital and you make a circle and that's it you're done there is no erasing just like my character art there is no going back Sure, you can crinkle it up and do it again, but that is imprinted in that moment in time. Your mindset is kind of written down and there's no mm -hmm. words. It is a silent, wordless place uh, from which you're creating. And that is so fucking beautiful. And that's where I try to take a lot of these works. So I hope that that you know, inspires people to cultivate that relationship between your thoughts and realize, <clears throat> look, you're having a bad day. And that's because of your own fucking brain. Like, and you know, I put even that in quotes, like you can change that and every day can be lovely. And I, of course, that's easier said than done. But um, that is one of the goals of my work is to spread that love. No, yeah, Co conveying peacefulness. And I think you managed to do it beautifully. Uh, one of the great things that set apart um, the Buddhism, right, is the fact that you're thinking of thinking and you're thinking of not thinking as well. So right. it is a learning experience and, and, and it's unique to everyone and that, that's lovely. Uh, I usually have a long list of questions, but the long answers you gave basically covered uh, the most <laughs> of them. Which is great, but then at the same time, I feel like if we had the time, we could have been going on for like three, four, or five hours, however much time we had. Um, but the great thing is, you're in for the long haul, so in the future, we will be able to to probably have you again if you were to accept. And Absolutely. who knows, who knows where we will be then, right? Uh, Absolutely. But I do, I do want to have uh, the community questions that we have here um if if that's no problem with you a few absolutely. of them might be absolutely a few of them might be different than you would normally expect let's see different is the best man and just for the record beyond this anyone can reach out to me ever like on any of these platforms i don't know what the fuck i'm doing but i'm <laughs> in this and i'm creating things and if anyone's like wow he is above my skill level how did he do that wow he is has this business and doing this how did he do that just ask hey i love meditation what is that how do you do that what should i do just ask me just hit me up i respond to everybody i'm not some too fancy guy i don't give a shit man i'm we're all one like just be nice don't be a dick don't put comments <laughs> that are bullshit because i'll i'll fucking i'll like there i'm strict also like i'm super nice but i will block you immediately if you're an asshole but 
And also, that's not to say there's not criticism. Criticize, like, go nuts. But <laughs> anyone anyone can ask me anything at any time. So I'll just leave it at that and, and shoot away. Oh, that's perfect, everyone. So you guys heard it. Uh, I did drop all your links there. So everyone wanting to get in contact, I, 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 hope, I hope you guys can be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, first question here: Is there a process for picking the public figures uh, that you decide to portray? So that's interesting. Um, the 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 process, if we can call it that, is not necessarily. So, a lot of the people I choose, it might be a movie I just watched, right? Like it's um, uh, like the Jesus from The Big Lebowski. Like, wow, what a an amazing character. Am I the only one who thinks that he's an amazing, amazing character? No. But do I want to do, do I want to kind of immortalize him in my world? Yeah, I do. Do I, and then, um, you know, like Basquiat, yeah, like, yeah, of course, like these, <clears throat> and Monet, like I, all in this artist realm, who are they? Like, what does Monet look like? For instance, to go back to that, like, nobody knows. Um, so I went and I saw that exhibit, I saw a photo of him at the Art Institute, and I was like, oh shit, this guy looks cool as hell. He's always smoking this like corn cob pipe, which I didn't <laughs> include, but either way, I just liked, I liked his vibe. And I'm like, people need to know what this dude looks like. And that's the thing is on Instagram, I have no fucking idea what people are actually gonna like, but but in a nice way, I don't care. You know, like it's not, so, so I guess the process of choosing who that's gonna be it's all over the fucking board. I don't know where my mind's gonna be. It's sort of random. I'm very into boxing. I'm a boxer myself. Uh, I box like two, three days a week, um, which, which, by the way, just to do a, a little light share of information, um, I uh, have been talking with Logan Paul. I don't know if this is, you know, love him or hate him. He's a crazy guy and he's about to fight um, Floyd Mayweather oh, yeah. very soon on June 6th. And I mm -hmm. did work, I did a bunch of commissions for him. Um, some NFTs that he is hopefully going to drop. Who the hell knows? Because he's a very busy man. Uh, getting hold of him is, is crazy. And he's always just like, yeah, sorry, can't talk, man. I'm, I got to go fight the Gronk brothers, whatever the hell he's doing in like Puerto Rico. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a wild dude and it's, it's amazing. But I have uh, worked with him for to release some of these NFTs for that fight, which possibly will be the fucking biggest pay-per-view event in the history of mankind and there's a possibility that my work will be an nft that when you buy that package you can claim so who knows if that's going to happen but if it does holy shit will that be a crazy thing and he is the subject um to stay relevant to the topic of those pieces so i made a piece of him his name is the maverick basically and uh, i made some pieces of him that you'll you will not be able to find online on any of my stuff because they are secret uh but if they mm -hmm. come out you'll be like holy shit that's that's what he was talking about uh, but but who the hell knows but i bet that will be released if it is released in the next uh week or two all right perfect we got some insider info right there we'll see if it comes <laughs> to fruition or not but yeah <laughs> that's cool man um yeah, yeah. let me see okay no no we got a, an idea on how that is done let's go for the next one uh do you use sketches on paper before moving to digital canvas uh the answer in short is no so i used to be all about, like I said, before the NFT world, if you asked me that question in November, I'd say, yes, I'm starting to, don't worry, I'm going to eventually move to the canvas to be a legit artist. But now I do not need to. I like the digital world better. Um, it is more fun. It is just as authentic for people that are haters on that and galleries and whatnot that are traditional. Um, good luck with the future, bitch, because it's all gonna be digital and gonna be NFTs uh, and that's, where I'm hanging my hat. Um, and not to say I don't love traditional art. That is not my point. I am I just love to stay in the digital world. And if I'm gonna practice, if I'm gonna you know, get the rust out before I get a piece going, I'm gonna practice in Procreate with a pencil tool so I can get used to that Apple Pencil touching that glass screen. All right, perfect. Next one here, probably your fault that people are asking this because you probably they probably felt like they could. 
but do you believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's like a mathematical certainty that life exists somewhere else in the universe. And also, um, but this is kind of the same answer that I would give if someone asked me about my view of God, which is um, we at the moment do not know and cannot comprehend it. So I leave room for it. I would never say no. I think that's a stupid response, um, but I would never say yes because I've never seen it and I don't have a fucking clue. But I think uh, if you ask uh, a you know astrophysicist, I think a lot of them would say, yes, there is life somewhere else. There, the, the recipe that we have here on earth uh, with carbon, nitrogen, whatever, um, exists in this beautiful little picture of harmony somewhere else because the universe is, as we understand it, fucking endless and they are seemingly endless and expanding um that it, it it would make sense that there is life somewhere else now if that's aliens quote unquote with some people walking around with that kind of look like us i almost think that that is ridiculous like it's probably going to be some crazy fucking life form that you cannot make with even your imagination again mm -hmm. it's probably beyond comprehension because of the the permutations of the probability of what those things are to make up what we even consider life like that definition is probably even off uh it's just based on what we know on this tiny little blue planet um but i would say my answer is probably all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> People are, are feeling the need to get philosophical with you, man. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. What is the color of the wind? The color of the wind. Um, all right. That I'm going to go with it is all the colors. Uh, the color spectrum is contained in there because uh, just as a scientist slash philosopher, I would say um, the wind I'm going to go ahead and say doesn't necessarily carry a color per se, because even the word color is the visual spectrum that we understand as a human being, which is limited, right? There's infrared yes. and all the shit that we uh -huh. can't see that we see like it's a bee, yeah. right? I'll check, exactly. Like a bee looks at a flower and it's like this fucking lit up crazy beacon of like neon. We don't see that. So color is, Uh, limiting limiting terms so um i i don't know exactly but i would say the sun if i had a god is god because without the sun everything you know is gone so whatever that means for so i guess my answer would be in the visual spectrum that we understand which is color and one of those out of the roy g biv um wind can contain all of them and it depends on the time of day like the magic hour why cinematographers and photographers choose dawn and dusk uh, it can change so it contains all of them and it depends on uh water uh water molecule density like a rainbow um so my answer is all of the colors of the visual spectrum that you understand <laughs> I love I love how you don't avoid it. You don't avoid it. You, you, you're in for a fight. Okay. I think yeah, no, it's one of those things. I was I was watching this uh this video the other day. It was very funny. And like the physicist goes like, oh no, like uh, trivially, like temperature doesn't exist, right? Temperature is is not a, a thing. There is no no singular thing that we, we can isolate and call temperature. The same thing is with color. It's just a subsection of a phenomenon that we right. as humans perceive. And, right. and so that is color, right? But when you yeah. think about the fre frequency, uh, the, the length of the frequency of light to give us the colors, we only see a subsection. And that's what we call color. And, yep. and <laughs> yeah, yep, that's exactly. a very, very fair answer, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else do we have. Uh, they love this. They love this. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god, I don't know if I can ask that one. <laughs> Someone asked. Oh no, 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 go for it. No, <laughs> at, dude, there is no dude. I don't give a fuck. Ask me anything. Go for it. No, but it's not. <laughs> it's not because of you, man. But someone asked mushrooms. Just mushrooms. Have I ever taken them? So, uh, for sure, I have taken mushrooms. Back in the day, I was a. Uh, I would call like a. I don't, I, uh, like a psycho knot, I believe is the term, which is essentially uh, someone who is a scientist in the realm of psychedelics uh, in an experimental sense. Maybe Jack Kerouac and that gang kind of rooted in that beatnik generation that started that mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and kind of, all right, let's take this and see how perception shifts. Let's see this new dimension that we can get to in a scientific sense not some bullshit pseudoscientific term um but the answer is yes i absolutely have done mushrooms i don't do that anymore um but as a kid a hundred percent uh i would dabble in that and i would recommend uh because that's also another thing uh that psilocybin for instance the active ingredient is being understood as oh shit we should not have made this illegal like all fucking things that the government has gone a little bit too crazy on that can help people with uh ptsd and depression and all these lovely things that they're now studying in places like denver where i'm hopefully moving very very soon um that it's kind of they took the gloves off and said look <clears throat> we don't know shit. psychology is in its infancy let's try some other stuff uh with positive results so uh it's a lovely thing i would also say do not eat more than about an eighth ever. I don't recommend it, period, for the record. But if you would, uh, don't eat too much because holy shit, you will be, uh, it will turn from, wow, I'm giggly and having a great time to, oh my fucking God, I get, there's little devils running around me. You can get the fear, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, I used to be kind of like a guide in that world for a lot of friends and, and people that did that because I uh, would take hallucinogens uh, a decent amount. Uh, with, uh, so I, I kind of thought of myself as a, a kind of uh, a guide through that world. But uh, the one main thing would be set and setting, bitch. Like, watch your dosage, okay? Dosage is something that people do not talk about enough. Be careful. It's crazy. If you take too much, it will not go well. You can't, it's not like, I'm not even sure, like chocolate. Oh my God, I ate so much. It's, it's amazing. I mm -hmm. love it. No, mm -hmm. it will turn bad if you take too much. Wash your dosage. And the answer is yes, I've taken mushrooms. No, yeah, I feel like a lot of people uh, make the mistake of going too much in one way or the other. So it's very important to, to be responsible even when like advocating in favor of those sort of things right? absolutely yeah be mindful be careful about absolutely how... i'm not advocating anything but if you were to be mm -hmm. careful watch your that's watch fair damage. yes that's fair um all right that's a question of mine have you watched midnight gospel midnight gospel i don't believe i have what is that tell me about this you should you should and uh, there's this guy has um had in the past um how would you say a podcast where he talks about meditation drugs etc 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 and it was made into an animation uh and it's basically just the transcript but it has a lot of crazy stuff happening in the animation uh, I think I think you'll have a great time if you give it a go. I think it touches a lot of subjects that we touched here. That's amazing. I just wrote it down and I will check it out. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know I'm <laughs> recommending your stuff, dude. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, love it. Uh, I think this is going to be it for today. Unfortunately, I have to go. But as I said, uh for everyone who is here in the long haul i'm sure we will met again i'm sure we'll have other opportunities in the future thank you so very much for taking the time to be with us uh the community greatly appreciated thank you man. hell yeah thank you thanks everybody bye
And thank you everyone for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, eat some nice food, and I talk with you guys soon on the Elite server. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.